Source transformation. Source transformation is another great tool for simplifying electrical circuits. Here's how it works. You can swap a voltage source in series with a resistor for a current source in parallel with the same resistor, or the other way around. In simpler terms, any current source in parallel with a resistor can be replaced by a voltage source in series with that resistor, and vice versa. Let's break it down with an example. Imagine a light bulb with a resistance of 2 ohms. Now connected in series with a 4 ohm resistor and a 12 volt voltage source. What happens? Since the resistors are in series, we can calculate the total current using Ohm's law. So current is voltage divided by resistance, we get 2 amps. Now to find the voltage across the bulb, we apply Ohm's law again. V equals I times R, we get 4 volts across the light bulb. Now let's try something different. We power the same light bulb using a 3 amp current source in parallel with a 4 ohm resistor. What happens now? Since the 4 ohm resistor and the 2 ohm bulb are in parallel, we use the current divider rule to find how much of the 3 amps goes through the bulb. The result? Current through the 2 ohm bulb is 2 amps, and the voltage across it is again 4 volts. Same current, same voltage, just like before. Pretty cool, right? The light bulb doesn't care how it's powered. As long as it gets the same voltage and current, it behaves exactly the same. That means in some cases, we can replace voltage sources with current sources and vice versa to make the analysis easier. But that leads to a practical question. How do we figure out the correct value of the transform source? It's actually quite straightforward. If you're replacing a voltage source in series with a resistor by a current source in parallel with that resistor, Here's what you do. Imagine disconnecting the load and shorting the terminals. Now calculate the current through the resistor. That current becomes the value of the new current source. On the flip side, if you're replacing a current source in parallel with a resistor by a voltage source in series, disconnect the load and leave the circuit open. Then calculate the voltage across the resistor. That's your new voltage source value. But here's the golden rule. Only use source transformation when it actually helps simplify the circuit. Sometimes it makes things cleaner. Other times, not so much. Next, let's apply source transformation to a real circuit and see how much easier it can make things. Here's the problem. We need to find IL, the current, through a 100 ohm resistor. And during our transformation steps, we'll leave that resistor untouched, since it's our load. Sure, we could go the long way, combine resistors, calculate the total current, then backtrack to find IL. But why not take a shortcut? Source transformation can simplify the process dramatically. Look closely at the voltage source in series with a resistor. What if we convert that into a current source in parallel with the same resistor? That one move turns the whole resistor network into a parallel circuit, which is perfect because now we can apply the current divider rule straight away to find the current through the 100 ohm load. As we said earlier, the key step is determining the value of the new current source. To do that, we isolate the voltage source and its series resistor. Then we short the rest of the circuit and calculate the current using Ohm's law. In this case, the short circuit current comes out to 2 amps. That means we can now replace the voltage source and the resistor with a 2 amp current source in parallel with a 25 ohm resistor. This transformation doesn't change how the circuit behaves, but now it's way easier to work with. Now we just apply the current divider rule and we can directly calculate the current through the 100 ohm resistor. If you do the math right, you'll find that IL is 0.267 amps. Quick, clean, and effective. That's the beauty of source transformation. Let's go through another example. We're asked to find VL, the voltage across the eight ohm resistor. Now this circuit has two power sources, one voltage source and one current source. And as I mentioned earlier, you have to be careful about choosing the right parts of the circuit to transform. Pick the wrong ones and things can get messy. So let's start with the current source that has a four ohm resistor in parallel. We'll transform it into an equivalent voltage source. To do that, we disconnect the rest of the circuit, leave the terminals open, and calculate the voltage. Current times resistance is 12 volts. So now we have a 12-volt voltage source in series with a 4-ohm resistor. 
Next, we notice this new branch is connected in series with another 2 ohm resistor, so we can simply add them up. 4 plus 2 equals 6 ohms total. Now we transform again. Let's convert this 12 volt source in series with 6 ohms into a current source in parallel with 6 ohms. Same process, disconnect the rest of the circuit, short the terminals, and calculate the current. 12 over 6 is 2 amps. Now that we've replaced the first voltage source with a current source, we're almost done. But there's one more 12 volt voltage source left in the circuit. It's connected in series with a 3 ohm resistor, so let's convert that as well into a current source in parallel with a 3 ohm resistor. Same process as before. Isolate the branch, short the terminals, and use Ohm's law, 12 over 3, which is 4 amps. Now let's look at what the circuit has become. We've got two current sources, each in parallel with a resistor. The resistors, 3, 6, and 8 ohms, are all part of a fully parallel network. But be careful. The two current sources are facing opposite directions. So their net effect is 4 minus 2 is 2 amps total current. Now we apply the current divider rule to find the current through the 8 ohm resistor. Then we calculate the output voltage. VL is 3.2 volts. And just like that, problem solved. It might feel like a lot of transformations, but don't worry. You don't need to redraw every step. With a bit of practice, you'll be able to handle most of these in just a few quick moves. That's the real power of source transformation. It turns complex circuits into clean, solvable ones. That's it for today's video. If you find this content valuable and want to support our work, you can do so through Patreon. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more educational videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.